come on all over the building, Mount Zion. Can we clap our hands, open up our mouths? Come on, how many people came into the house of God with a praise on your lips? Come on, with the clapping of your hands, let's just begin to exalt God in this place. If you're watching, if you're on the live stream, just beginning to put up those hand emojis. We came to usher in the spirit and the presence of the Lord in this place. Come on, he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the name that is above every name. Come on, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. I said yokes are destroyed at the name of Jesus. Chains are loose at the name of Jesus. Do I have anybody that came to lift up and magnify the name of Jesus? Come on, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Come on, Psalms 100 says, enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. This is what I love about the scripture. It says the Lord is good. I said the scripture says that the Lord is good. I wish I had somebody that can think about the goodness of the Lord. Come on, he was good to you on Monday. He was good to you on Tuesday. He was good to you on Wednesday. He was good to you on Thursday. He's been a short enough good God on Friday. He's been good on Saturday. And because you made it to the, to the house of the Lord today, I said we serve a great God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Do we have anybody that came to give a great God some great praise? I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy of your hallelujah today. He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy to be adored because he's great. He says he's great. He's great. If you know he's great, I dare you to open up your mouth. Fill this room with worship. Come on, fill this room with praise. Come on, give the Lord what you got today. Don't give him the rest. Give him your best. Come on, I said, don't give him the rest of what you got. Give him the best of what you got. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all honor. I said, he's worthy of all praise. You have officially been called to worship. Come on, open up your mouth and praise God. Come on, come on. Let's fill the room with worship on this morning. And let's clap our hands like we love him. Come on, come on. We serve a great God, and he deserves a great praise. Anybody believe that? Come on, we serve a great God, and he deserves a great praise. Everybody clap. Yeah. Come on. Even up in the balcony. Come on, come on. Let's get on one accord. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the song says.
has to bow. Yeah. Every tongue has to proclaim. Yeah. He is Lord. And he is good. Yes, Lord. And you are Lord. And you are good. So there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name, oh Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Come on, fill the room with it. Say, there is power in. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power, y'all. Power. Fill the room with worship. Say,
I guarantee you that if you move yourself out of the way, what you are believing him for will be made manifest in your life today. Normally right here, we would have prayer. But I hear the Lord saying this morning, your worship is the prayer. So we can't move past this moment because I believe that there are some people who didn't come to spectate this morning. This altar is open because the altar is a place of, of worship and of sacrifice. I don't know what you need this morning, but let your worship pray for you. Your worship is going to intercede on your behalf. Now I don't need spectators in this moment. I need some people who are coming
because of your faith. <laughs> because of your faith. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith, <laughs> because you have faith to press in his presence. Your faith has made you whole. And so I leave this with you as you're on your way back to your seat. Be healed. Be delivered. And be set free. I don't know who it's for. But I believe it's for 500 of you in this room. Be healed from every disease. Be delivered from everything that has you bound. And be set free. On the way back to your seat, I just want you to declare, I'm healed, I'm delivered, and I'm set free. If you believe that it's done, would you put those blessed hands together and give God the best hand clap of praise that you have? And as you're doing that, let's receive our college and young adult choir as they come.
know that today. Just lift your voice and declare that today. Clap your hands, all you people. Come on, has anybody been redeemed in this place? Come on, clap your hands right there. Has anybody been redeemed? Clap your hands right there. We come to proclaim the name of Jesus, the one who heals, saves, and delivers. Come on, Cecil.
at somebody and say, don't make me call that name. There's power in the name. Anybody know that there's power in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Well, we, are give, we give God glory and praise for what he is doing. We thank God and greet each and every one of you in the matchless name of Jesus. If this is your first time worshiping with us, would you just wave at us and let us know that you, this is your first time? Wow. Come on, Mount Zion. Help me thank God. For all of those worshiping with us for the first time, we see you there in the balcony. For those of you who are watching online from around the world, we welcome you into this place. And we know, we stand firm and believe that you can feel the presence and the power of God right where you are. And if this is your first time worshiping with us right there online, we just want you to put the number one in the chat and watch what happens. Our family there, they're going to welcome you and show you some love, and we give God glory and praise for you. We're so excited about all that's going on. I want to remind you to stay connected with our, with our pastor and first lady. You can follow our pastor on Instagram and all social media platforms at Joseph Walker 3, as well as our first lady at Dr. Steph Walker. And while you're doing that, be sure to follow us at MT Zion Nashville, because there you will get all of the coolest and latest updates that you don't want to miss and we give God glory for that and we thank God for our leaders being relational we're certainly praying for our brothers and sisters affected by the tornado in Mississippi we we received word and that over 20 people lost their lives in this devastating event and so family let's continue to stay in prayer for the entire community you know, also, March is Kidney Disease Awareness Month, and we have partnered with the Tennessee Kidney Foundation to bring awareness and to offer screenings. Did you know that with high blood pressure and diabetes occurring at a high rate in our community, people of color are actually three times more likely to suffer from kidney disease? And so as a result, today, what we want you to do is we want you to take advantage of our screening opportunity today after service. It's going to be taking place in the classrooms on the second level uh, on the west entrance side on this side. And we have representatives in the atrium for those of you who want to take uh, part in those screenings. We encourage you to do that. Uh, we, we have representatives in the atrium who will be able to direct you right upstairs. And it doesn't take too long for you to do that. I promise you they'll have you in and out. Well, I don't know about you, but I am excited because it's becoming a couple of Destiny Marriage Conference Week. Anybody excited in the building? We are so excited. It's taking place right there at the Hilton in downtown Nashville on March 30th through April the 2nd. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal, and we are so excited about that. All of our speakers and hosts, they're coming in. They're fly our guests are coming coming in and our hosts are gearing up and we're so excited about all that's going to be taking place. The sessions are going to be absolutely amazing and so much more is going to be taking place right there at the conference. Now, you asked and we answered. I am so excited to let you know that if you would like to attend the conference virtually, virtual registration is open right now. You can pull out your phone, pull out your tablet or whatever you have today electronic device and you can go right there to mtzionnashville.org and you can register right now. The cost for that is only $179 and so we are so grateful for you. If you can't be in the physical space, we will see you in the virtual space and so we're also so excited to announce that we were able to award over 40 scholarships, over 40 scholarships to people including singles, couples, we were able, because of your generosity, we were able to do that, and we give God glory and praise for that, and we thank you for your generosity. 
And if you would like to still register and or sponsor, you too can head over to mtzionnashville.org and, and sponsor and or register for the conference because it's not too late. We're also so excited about the seven women at the cross. Seven last words. It's going to be taking place. Come on, let's give it up. We are so excited. It's going to be taking place Good Friday, April the 7th, 12 noon at the Jefferson Street location. We have some power, powerful women in our ministry who is going to be delivering the word of God straight from the heart of God. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Seven women elders and ministers and pastors, they're going to be giving you that word. And I promise you, you want to get there early because if you've ever been with us in the past, you know. It goes down on Good Friday with the women at the cross. And we give God glory and praise for that. And then on Saturday, we are excited to let you know for our Easter extravaganza. Now, you may be asking Pastor B, what is that? Our Easter extravaganza is designed for the kids and the family as a whole. So on Saturday, April the 8th, from 11 to 1 p.m. at our Jefferson Street location, we're going to have food trucks. That's going to be music and fun activities for the entire family. And so we invite you to come on out to participate and be a part of our Easter extravaganza. To learn more about that, you can text the word Easter egg. There you go, right there. It's a 78228. And I promise you it's going to be a great time. And then as we head into Sunday, we have a goal of reaching one thousand souls who will come to Christ for our Easter experience. And so we currently have, I think that's enough to give God praise right there. Yeah. We thank God in advance for what he's getting ready to do. And we currently have over 100 invitations. So family, we really need all hands on deck. All we need you to do is pull out your phone and take a picture right there of that. They're going to put it back on the screen to give you time to get your phone out and do all of that and take a picture of that because you want to register. You want to be sure that you register for that so that when you invite five people, at least five people, we want you to invite at least five people who are not already a member. And as you do that, we want you to register because there's going to be a big prize giveaway. And I promise you, you don't want to miss it. So we need all hands on deck. To learn more about that, you can simply text the word INVITE to 78228 or visit our website. Now, don't forget to use the QR code as well and the link to record your guest invitations. And so we give God glory and praise for that. And so also, as we look to that, we're also calling for 100% tithing as we raise $1 million for HBCUs, outreach, and high school scholarships. We give God glory. And as our pastor said, we believe this year it's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. And we thank God. And last year, we trusted God and we were able to build our teen center debt free and in excellence. And this is your year to trust God with your tithe. And we give God glory and praise for that. Well, you know, Mount Zion, we have, I believe, the best leader on this side of heaven. Would you agree with me? He is a great man of character and integrity, and not only that, he leads with excellence and consistency. And not only is he our pastor, but he also serves as the international presiding bishop of the Four Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International and has been leading the way in leading the fellowship in excellence since July of 2020. 2015 when he officially began, but it was in July of 2013 when he was announced to be the successor to Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton. We thank God for that. And because of his leadership, because of the dynamic leadership and the heart for God of our pastor, typically he was scheduled and voted to serve two five-year terms, which means that 2025 was going to be the year that he passed the mantle. However, after much prayer and consideration, I stand here to let you know that the council asked, he was asked, and it was voted unanimously for our pastor to serve another five years. History. And so we thank God for our pastor who has been elected to serve another five years from 2025 to 2030. 
as the international presiding bishop. Come on, of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International. And we cannot give God glory for him without giving God glory for our First Lady who stands right by his side. She is the First Lady of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship and we have you covered as well. They are a team and we give God glory. And to that end, would you help me welcome our pastor, Bishop Joseph W. Walker III. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're so grateful, thankful. You may have your seat. Thank y'all so much. Um, I could not do this without pastoring one of the most amazing congregations on the planet. And uh, he, he just made me do it. And uh, he wanted to be here. Y'all help me thank God for Joseph Juan Walker IV. Say what's up, everybody. Say what's up. Tell them what's up. All right. Don't get to it. But listen, we're grateful to God. We've been blessed all day today, and God has been doing great things. And um, I'm so thankful um, for all of you. The anointing that was in this place, it's been happening all day today. It's been such a crazy anointing, um, a miracle, a, a miracle kind of anointing. You know, I've been doing this a while, and I just thought there's a miracle in this house for somebody today, and you're not going to leave until it hits your house. Let me just say that. You're not going to leave. Yeah. Our prayers, uh, Tennessee State University, we're praying for you and all the student body and all of you. Know that you're in our hearts and prayers. I speak a little about it in my message today and just know that we're praying for all of our students and college students who are where we, we don't take it lightly. And Pastor Christian, thank you for what you do on these campuses. It matters. It matters, man. It matters. Um, we're going to have a baby dedication in just a moment, but let me just share this with you. I am uh, sharing the vision of Mount Zion beginning of the year, I shared uh, that our vision was going to be focused forward. I talked about how God was leading us last year over the wall, and we did go over the wall. And not only did we go over the wall, we don't go over the wall just to say, I made it, and drop. You got to keep going. Like, I don't get over the wall unless I'm going to take territory. And I talked about the vision that it was going to be a year uh, rooted in the application of God's word. I talked about how God was going to allow us uh, everyone, the sole of our foot to touch, he was going to give it to us. This is going to be a year to occupy territory into places we have never seen before. Yeah. And some of you are already experiencing it in your home and your job. You're already experiencing it. And so for us here at Mount Zion, we are incredibly excited about expanding our ministry. We have one church in three locations, and God has laid it upon our heart to expand even beyond that. Vision doesn't happen in silo. It happens because we are collaborative. We share with you an opportunity to chime in on where you felt the need was. Because ministry is meeting a need. What did you feel the need was in order to meet the needs of God's people? And for us, it's, yes, God is growing this ministry. Over a thousand people a year, even during the pandemic, just have been coming to this ministry. And I give God glory, but there's so many more souls that we're here to not just uh, celebrate the exchange of, we're not trying to share the aquarium, you know, like fish in the aquarium. We're trying to get fish out of the sea. Does that make sense? And um, here's the deal. You all gave us your feedback in the survey. I had a chance to talk with our board of directors, talk to our executive directors, talk to our deacons. And based on your survey and based on much prayer and thought, we're going to be expanding our congregation to another location that starts at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning. It's a one-hour service, and hear me well. Before I tell you a little bit more about it, it is not designed for you just to come and just, I want to go visit that, but no. This is more about allowing us to reach and impact the people, one who perhaps live in that area, uh, live around that area, second and people who have that desire for that early service at 7 o'clock because it's only one hour. And then for people to kind of say, let's, let's reach people in that community that really want to hear about what God is doing here at Mount Zion and know more about Jesus. So beginning the Sunday after Easter, that's the 16th of April, right? Mark your calendars. The Mount Zion Baptist Church 
a fourth location will be extended into Brentwood, Tennessee. And I'm excited about it. Let's give God glory for that. Come on, let's give him glory. So for those of you that are in the Brentwood area, anywhere surrounding that area, we look forward to you joining us and being a part of what God is uniquely doing. It's going to be amazing. Murfreesboro was number two on that survey. Murfreesboro okay, was then number two. Clarksville was number three. And we make these decisions around uh, not just, you know, in terms of spiritually, that is the key, but it's also logistically. Where can Bishop get to from one location to the next? I mean, if you know, I don't, I don't, contrary to popular opinion, I do not have a helicopter. If you want to know how I roll between services, bring some gas sex and jump in the truck with us, and I promise you, you'll see. You can be like, whoa, how y'all do this? But we, God makes it happen with a great team of people. We go between each location. Physically, I am there. And so beginning in April after Easter, four locations, one service in each, and I'm excited. And let me lean in on this. Uh, now, because I want to make sure before you, the narrative gets out, that's why I know it's going to be locked right here on YouTube. Just send it right to YouTube. Say, listen to what the man said, okay? Listen to what the man said. Uh, we're not going into Brentwood right now to, like, buy a building and to build a church. We're not doing that. We have been blessed with an opportunity to lease a building. And uh, we thank God for that because it gives us a chance to feel our way, kind of see how we're going to trend in that. But when you know you're in God's will, God just keeps making provision. If it's God's will, it's God's bill, huh? When I announced it to our board of directors, and this is the month of March, so I want you to do the math, at nine more months in this month, correct? The nine more months in this year, correct? I announced to the board of directors, um, and before I could even have the meeting with the board of directors, one of them said, well, I'm gonna pay for three months rent. And while I was on the call with the board of directors, another one texted me and said, I'm gonna pay for three months of rent. And then when I got on the call with the deacons, uh, one of them said, I'm going to, pay for a month rent and then today I mentioned at 815 and someone said I'm going to pay for a month of rent and then on my way here another one of our deacons said I'm going to pay for a month of rent so nine months this entire year is already paid for <laughs> because when it's God's will I believe I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. So I'm thankful to God. And uh, so I want y'all to make sure, again, you pray for us. It's not one of those services I want you to come back. Just go, go check it out. And no, no, no. You got to really be intentional. Give us a chance to really reach the souls out there and to make it happen. It's going to be so awesome. Right, Joseph? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be awesome, man. So uh, <laughs> you can use your mic, man. Use your mic next time, okay? All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but listen, uh, we're thankful to God. I want y'all to continue to pray. Uh, <laughs> I want y'all to continue to pray. Amen. And um, we got, um, uh, we're going to do great things. It's going to be amazing, and I'm thankful to God. We're going to bless some babies today. We got a baby to bless today. Joseph, how about that? Let's bless these babies. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. What a blessing. Come on. And one of the things I was getting better to say while they're coming, um, if by chance the Lord, because we are a debt-free ministry, if by chance we one day have to purchase or do a building in Brentwood, y'all know I'm a man of my word. I never had a vision. And I, didn't, I don't play with that. I wasn't that pastor that had a building fund. We never had a building. So if we're going to do it, we're going to do it debt free. Somebody shout debt free. Amen. Woo. Mount Zion is a growing ministry. Look at this. All right. Six. We have six beautiful children. I see it. Thank y'all so much. What a blessing. I'm so grateful and thankful for each one of y'all today. God has blessed you richly, and uh, we're just honored to be able to share with you as we bless all six of these precious babies. And uh, thank you for giving us the joy and the privilege to be able to, to share with you in this moment today. Uh, Mount Zion, I want you just to extend your hand in this direction, and we're going to pray. Amen.
gift of children, oh God. Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will cover each one of them in your blood as we dedicate them back to you, oh God. Lord, we ask right now, oh Heavenly Father, that you will give the family kingdom wisdom to train each child up, oh Lord, according to your word. God, we thank you for the people that you were assigned to their lives, the teachers, Lord, the coaches, the mentors, the people that will see their future through God. Lord, we ask right now that you will put them in their path, oh God. Lord, cover them, cover every household, oh God. Cover every person that comes into their life and brings influence, God. Lord, we ask right now, oh God, that you will make their path straight, that, oh Heavenly Father, that they will not forget where they come from, oh God, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you because you will be their foundation. We thank you and we bless you, O oh Lord, for the parents, O oh God. Give them strength in a time of need and resources that they need. And we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name as we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. He's asleep. We're not going to wake him, but what's his name? Cameron. Cameron. All right. Well, bless you, young man. Knocked out. I'm on. Hey, I know the ministry of sleep is a gift. Oh, there he is. All right. Well, thank God for you. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Doc, ah, good to see you. Who we got? Good. Emerald Marie. Hey, Emerald. How are you? You good? <laughs> Very nice to see you. She's so alert. I love it. So how are y'all? Good to see you all. How are you? Good to see you. All right. Here you go. Thank you. And Papa. Who we got? Paris Pal. Hey, Paris. How are you? That's a good hand, isn't it? <laughs> How are you? How are you? What a blessing. Well, thank God for you. God bless you. And who do we have? Amaris Johnson. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey. They passing that candy, but the fingers today. I see that. What's going on? Bless you. Who do we have here, sir? Casey Cargill. Hey, Casey. How are you? Oh. Oh, you want to come? Oh, I'll take you. <laughs> you. You'd like to have a word with us? <laughs> Joseph, he wants to eat. Is it Joseph? <laughs> wow, that's something. We got some more. Come on, buddy. All right. Thank y'all. Hi. What we got? Who we got? Uh, Liliana Noel Bradley. Oh, wow. What a blessing. Is an angel just sleep as she can be? I love it. We're not going to wake up because I know. Thank y'all. Come on. Let's thank God for all these families today. Thank y'all. Come on. Let's give it up. What a blessing. Amen. Well, how many blessed people like that today? God's been good to you. Come on. Good to you. First Sunday of, of January, first Sunday of April, sorry, it's, it's second Sunday of April is Easter, and we are going to raise a million dollars on that Sunday, and we're going to do it because of the generosity of folks like you, all tied Sunday. We want to reiterate this. We are giving 400000 to HBCUs, 200000 to scholarships for our college students, 100000 for our teens that are going to college and then the remainder to build our teen center and we need your help so if you're watching me around the world and God is laying upon your heart and you're like you know what I want to be a blessing this is ministry is blessing me and my family we need your help if you're in this place today I want you to be thinking about that if a hundred percent of us tithe we'd be well over a million dollars y'all we'd be in the two million three million dollar range on one Sunday let's do it because we believe that God has called us to be generous and right now we're gonna bless the Lord in our giving today we're the blessed people of God today who God's been good let's prepare our hearts to be generous if you want an envelope, raise your hand. If you're out there virtually, you can give uh, right here on the screen. You can see it. Of course, you can always give a man um, in the house virtually. We encourage you to do that. So thank you so much in advance, a man, for your generosity. We appreciate you so very much. We're going to pray. And we're going to thank God, amen, uh, for the blessings of the Lord. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Father, thank you for the privilege we have to give. We pray your blessings be upon every household, every family. And we thank you that it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen.
enhanced our text to give option with three simple steps. First, draft a new text message to 267 MTZ Seed. That's it. We've enhanced our text to give option with three simple steps. First, draft a new text message to 267 MTZ Seed. That's 267 MTZ S E E D. Second, add a giving keyword like tides, offering, vision, TV partner, or other. And third, provide the amount. For example, to tithe $20, type tithes20 as the message and press send. Remember to enter only one keyword per text message. You can also give online at mtzionnashville.onlinegiving.org or from the Mount Zion mobile app. Giving at Mount Zion is easier and more manageable. say to women and I heard this when I was doing my master's and it was like the best thing I ever heard and there was this one lady and she you know we always hear about fake it till you make it right and she was just like you know she had heard that and she had been you know telling herself that because she didn't feel like that she belonged in law school and so she was talking to a professor and they was just like no don't fake it till you make it fake it till you become it and I was just like, yes, like it just resonated with me, right? Because it's like fake it till you make it, like you make it and then what do you do with it? But then if you fake it till you become it, like you become that very thing that you have been striving for, right? We are good enough. Hey, Mount Zion family, my name is Tiffany Norman, one of the leaders of our amazing student ministry team here at the Mount. Now, if you are a parent of a third grade student, I'm sure that you have been made aware of the new legislation regarding third grade retention. As an educator for over 22 years, I know that standardized testing can bring about a bit of stress. So, to help alleviate some of the anxiety surrounding the test this year, we are inviting third grade students and their families to what we are calling Project Quest. This will be a two night event occurring on Thursday, April 6th and Thursday, April 13th at our Antioch location. The evening will be filled with interactive activities that will allow students and their families to be exposed to test strategies and tips that students can utilize during the state examination. You can find the registration information and link on our Mount Zion website. We look forward to engaging with our third grade students and families, and we can't wait to see you there. Well, hey, everybody, it's Pastor Brian Bradshaw, and this is my lovely wife. Tanisha Bradshaw. And we want to invite you to the Becoming a Couple of Destiny Marriage Conference that's taking place March 30th through April the 2nd. And babe, tell them where it's going down. Nashville, Tennessee at the Hilton Hotel. With our incredible host, Bishop Joseph and Dr. Stephanie Walker. And it's going to be an absolutely amazing time. Not only do we have incredible hosts, but we have an incredible lineup of speakers as well as sessions that's sure to catapult your relationship to the next level. And speaking of sessions, babe, we're hosting a session ourselves. Tell them a little bit about it. That's right. We're going to be talking about how to effectively communicate expectations. And speaking of expectations, did you know that unspoken expectations mm -hmm. is like venom to a relationship? You know? And But you know, the antidote to that is intentionally communicating your expectations in your relationship. And we're gonna be teaching and showing you how to effectively communicate your expectations and so much more. And that's why we want you to go to the website right now, www.mtzionnashville.org and register today because this is a conference you don't want, want to, to miss. miss. We'll see you there.
give God glory. Oh, my God. Oh, give him glory. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise for this moment, your word. And we pray, oh God, that your word will speak to us and we will be blessed, lives will be changed, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place. Move as only you know how. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Samuel chapter 1, the Bible says that there was a certain man of Ramathium, Zophim, the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkaniah, the son of Joram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of the one was Penaniah. Um, the name was one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penaniah. And Penaniah had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from the city yearly to worship the sacrifice of the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, and also two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penanah for his wife, to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a devil portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah rose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. And Eli the priest was sitting on the seat of the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but I will give your maidservant a male child. If you will give me a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. And now Hannah spoke in her heart only, her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. And therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken unto now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Tell somebody, if nobody else believes, I do. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on today. Have you ever been in a situation where it seemed impossible, but yet you still believe it was possible? Have you ever been in a situation where someone told you to accept your reality as it was, but there was something in you that protested that, and you yet believed that something was yet available to you? Have you ever been surrounded by naysayers who were insensitive and had no idea what you were going through? And yet you refuse to be consumed by their negativity or paralyzed by their pettiness. And yet you were determined to keep pushing. This is your word today. Because all of us at one time or another had to encounter moments just like this. And then God would send us a word. He would send us a word today to help us know that if nobody else believes in what he is doing in our lives, we have to believe. There has to be a sense of resilience, a sense of fortitude, a sense of conviction inside of you that says, if everything statistically is stacked against me, I yet believe that something is possible. God's word for you today is to not let the statistics discourage you. Don't let your situation disorient you, but keep your head up and keep on believing because God is going to use your faith to help you get triumph over the facts. So no matter what it is, hang in there because the best is yet to come. Today I want to tell you a story that could literally be featured on VH1. It could be featured on BT Plus. It could be featured on Lifetime or, or O. It is a story about a man in a home with two wives. 
And the scripture says that his name was Elkaniah, the Ephraimite, from Ephraim. And he has two wives. Now, the first he married, her name was Hannah. Now, Hannah had a long relationship with Elkanah. She was there, had been with him through a lot. She was like the rock. But then she discovered that she was barren and unable to give Elkaniah children. This becomes problematic in the culture in which she lives because you must understand in the culture in which she lived, you could have two wives. This was the culture, and so as a consequence, she's barren and I mean, the joy of the wife in that culture was to be able to give your husband a male child to carry on the bloodline because the male child was the seed. But then he would marry another one. Her name would be Penaniah. And Penaniah, the Bible says of her, that the Lord had opened up her womb and that she had given Elkaniah children. And in the home, you can imagine the dynamics that are taking place because you have one woman who has been there. She is barren yet. And another woman who is the new woman, but she has children by Elkaniah. And the Bible says that they were on their way to the temple, as was their regular routine. In Shiloh, they would go, and Penaniah would provoke Hannah, would get under her skin, would cause her to look at her and say, hey, Look at what I got, and you'll never have it. And it would create an interesting dynamic that Elkaniah in the house would have to try to figure this out and work through it. And the Bible declares that when Hannah got fed up, she went to the temple. She got tired of Penaniah taunting her. She got tired of going through the insensitivity of her husband. And she goes and she to the temple and she prays and the Bible says she prays so fervently that her lips were moving but nothing was coming out of her mouth to the degree that Eli the priest thought she was drunk and she says I'm not drunk no I'm just a woman of a sorrowful spirit I'm believing for something and it has not happened but I'm believing before I get up from here it's going to happen and sure enough Eli the priest gives her a word that God was going to answer your prayer and couch within that story is so much revelation. I want to help you understand this because all of us have been in places of barrenness before. When I talk about barrenness, you must understand I'm talking about the inability to produce something in your life. It's the vision that's inside of you. It's a dream. It's the thing that you should be doing, and it seemingly is not happening for you. That's who I'm talking to today. And what you must understand about this situation is that you have to declare your prognosis is premature. You see, because whenever someone gives you a prognosis, it is followed, it's typically preceded by a diagnosis. A diagnosis is that you are barren. The prognosis is that you would not have children. See, when I give you a diagnosis, then I'm telling you simply this is what's going to happen, how it's going to play out. And so for Hannah, you can imagine that the diagnosis, once I call you barren, then I've just assumed that your life will never produce what you wanted to produce. But today, I want you to understand something because even as I talk to you, I need you to hear this, that the prognosis that's been declared over your life is a little premature, that you cannot replicate and rehearse what people have spoken over your life because they have diagnosed you not knowing your God. They have diagnosed you not knowing what's possible in your life. And so what you've got to realize, don't speak too soon. Don't accept it too soon because your God is up to something. Hannah will discover what you and I will discover is that your diagnosis it's not your destiny. I want to talk to somebody today because it won't always be the way it is. Even though it looks depressing, even though it looks discouraging now, it is not a part of God's plan concerning your life. God's plan are still in motion regarding your destiny. And when a woman was barren in the Bible days, you have to understand there was a stigma associated with barrenness. And that stigma that was associated with barrenness is the same stigmas that we experience today whenever we don't have the ability to produce or to birth the thing that we're 
supposed to birth. Maybe you should have birthed by now the house you were supposed to have. Or maybe you should have been married by now. Or maybe you should have been debt free by now. Or you should have been in the program by now. You should have graduated by now. Or you should have had this by now. And it can be frustrating when you walk around because you're going to have to work through different kinds of stigma. And for Hannah, watch this. She has to work through it sociologically because the sociological stigma tied to barrenness is that everywhere I go, people know I'm the one that has not produced. I'm living in a world where I'm watching other people who have produced, but I'm not producing. And this is why you have to be careful how you get sucked into the vortex of social media and you have to protect your children because they'll get sucked in thinking somebody else has it and other people have it and I don't have it. And all of a sudden now they walk around with the sociological stigma thinking that people are looking at them strange and thinking that they're less than this and less than that. And as a consequence, when it affects you sociologically, the next thing is it begins to affect you psychologically because now it gets in your head. This is now when the enemy begins to put things in your head to make you think you are less than. So you cannot underestimate uh, the attack on mental health. You cannot underestimate what people are carrying in their heads. And that's why you got to check on people. You just can't assume that just because people show up that that ain't something going on between their ears. People are dealing with some stuff psychologically because the sociological stigma has now caused a psychological stigma. And now as a consequence, watch this, it causes a theological stigma because now if they think something wrong with me and I got in my head that something wrong with me, then God, you must have not made me like I need to be. So as a consequence, God, am I cursed? God, do you still love me? Why isn't it happening for me? I have come to declare you are not cursed. You are not some stepchild of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and God's plans are still in motion over your life. He knows the plans he has for you. Thoughts of peace are not even to give you a future and a hope. I come against that spirit that's trying to take you out in your head and declare the devil is a liar. God ain't through with you yet. to somebody right now. I know that's what happens to you. Sociologically, something's going on and then psychologically it ain't happening for me. Lord knows we praying for that precious family, that young lady at TSU. But you don't know what people be having in their head. That's why we got to keep pouring into people and letting them know the plans of God over their life because the devil will get in your head and make you think God is against you. But can I tell you something? God is in control of your outcome. Here's the good news. No matter what Hannah experiences, God proves that he's in control of the outcome. Because once you realize this, it gives you strength to deal with your situation. And you're no longer relying on people to do it for you. Because this is something that each of us needs to be reminded of. Because the devil will taunt you. The devil will interrogate you regarding your situation and attempt to convince you that he's actually in control. But the devil is a liar. Please understand, however this turns out, it's going to be God. God's real for your life. But everybody must understand, here is the point of identification. Can I peel this back? You got to deal with private pain. You see, when you're experiencing something like this, emotionally, it becomes difficult for people to try to understand the impact that it has upon your life. Her barrenness has begun to take a toll upon her life, and it doesn't really matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have, all of us are going to go through seasons of private pain. Seasons where you're forced to function when you want to fold. Seasons where you want to scream, but you got to keep on smiling. And what makes her pain so interesting is that just because people are close in proximity doesn't mean they're connected to your pain. Just because they are close in proximity doesn't mean they're connected to your pain. Her pain is in her own house. <laughs> you make the assumption that just because people live with you, just because people kick you with you, that those are the people that actually are tied in to what you are dealing with. Hannah's problem is that she is dealing with her husband who assumes that stuff is 
going to take the place of the depth of her pain. They go to the temple and he begins to give gifts and he gives gifts to Penaniah and he gives them to her children. He looks at Hannah and he gives her a double portion and says, am I not more than these children. Is this not greater than your need to have a child? He doesn't even realize that what I'm after, money cannot buy. What I'm after is deeper than flowers. It's deeper than a car. It's deeper uh, than taking me to the Lewis store. What I'm after is something much deeper. And people of God, listen, she's a woman who's got a situation happening. The situation is that she's got another woman in the house taunting her, parading her children around. It's painful. It's complex. But somebody has to understand she's experiencing a negative emotional reaction in her own house. And what is it? I'll prove it to you. She's dealing with insensitivity. Because now she's dealing with two people that are insensitive. Elkaniah and Penaniah are both insensitive. Elkaniah is thinking that stuff is going to do it. He's so out of touch. And, and the other one is just so insensitive. It's hard when you got people around you who you think love you, but they're just so insensitive. They have no idea of how deep your pain is. No idea of what's happening in your life. They don't even know your triggers. They don't even care about what you're dealing with. They don't even, they're not even aware of the holidays that bring stuff back up in your life. They're not even aware. All they want to do is just always turn up and ha ha he everything ha ha he he for me you got to be sensitive to what's happening in my life and because you're not sensitive it has proven to me that you also are immature uh, because the immaturity shows up in Penaniah because she playing games she looking up showing her children I'm talking about ha ha he he see what I'm after I ain't got time to be playing games with you I don't have time to be playing games with silly people I don't have time to be clapping back at you on social media I'm after too much with God tricks are for kids. I'm trying to help somebody understand in this season, you need some people that are serious in your life because if you are insensitive and if you are immature, it is clear you are irresponsible because you would have thought that, that Penaniah would have stood up and did the responsible thing and say, this has got to stop. We have got to deal with this head on. But he is so irresponsible that he keeps his mouth shut. Always be mindful of people that will not speak up, people that will not stand up. And people will see you hurting, see you going through something, and just stand back and say, my name is Bennett and I ain't in it. Baby, sometime you got to step up and you got to say, this has got to come to an end. Because I believe when you're dealing with private pain, people make assumptions about you. But I need to tell you, just because I carry it well doesn't mean it's not heavy. Hannah continues to function in an environment that's not conducive to her well-being, but she continues to do so. She's functioning in an environment that's not conducive, but she continues to do so. People assume because you continue to produce and because you continue to function, because you continue to show up, they just think that everything is always well. They see you perform at a high level, but they have no idea of how you get in your car and cry all the way home. Uh, they see you encourage everybody else, but they don't know about the nights when you're in your bed, but your face to the wall saying, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. They have no idea. They see you smile and give God glory, but they have no idea how you pull up to your job and it takes you a long time to get out the car or you pull up the class. It takes you a long time just to gather your thoughts and gather your spirit and say, Lord, I'm going to need you to give me strength before I go in here and deal with these demons, before I deal with this stuff. They have no idea. All they see is the well put together packaged version of you, but they don't realize you are a human being. And the fact is, people of God, people look at you and they think it's your strength. You're just so strong. Boy, I tell you, you just did. They don't realize it's not your strength because what you have learned to do, you have learned to put your strength in God. You have learned that his strength is made perfect in your weakness, that when you find yourself in your weakest moments, it was God that has kept you. Somebody can be a witness when you were about to break, lose your mind. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you? In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. God was like my trainer. 
God was like a good personal trainer. God was standing back watching you lift it, saying, you can do it. You can do it. I'm building muscles in you. You can do it. And you hated it. Lord, it's heavy, but God knew your capacity. And God says, keep on lifting. Keep on lifting. But then that was that last set when you got to that last rep. And you said, God, oh, God, I can't do it. And God knew your breaking point. And God said, I'm not going to let what you carry it. I'm not going to let the weight of what you carry and break you. So I'm going to spot you. So just when you think it's going to fall on you, just remember, your dad is over you and he's I, I, I believe I got somebody here today that ought to give God glory that he didn't let it fall on you and break you but just in the nick of time God spotted you that's why you have to learn to get and be determined to get to the place of prayer Scripture says something so powerful, you can either stay in your environment and remain stuck, depressed and discouraged, or you can get strength, get up and go do something about it. She gone as a strength. And the Bible says that Hannah went to the temple alone. She got up out that house and she went to the temple alone. She got her stuff, didn't ask nobody's permission. She just went alone. Because there are some seasons you just need to be left alone. I don't want the dog to bark. I don't want the cat to meow. I don't need you to call me. You don't have to invite me to nothing. I just want to be left alone. Am I talking to the real saints today? I'm talking about people that can testify. Don't take it personal when I don't want to turn your call. I'm just in a place right now. I just need to be left. She's in a place where she is undisturbed by anybody else. She needs to go talk. She needs to go talk to God. See, she is not being alone to go get tequila and go to South Beach. No, she needs to go talk to God. Because if you don't come apart, you will come apart. Uh, let me employ the English major that I was to this. Apart, one word, can be used as an adverb or an adjective to describe separation or distance. Can be used as a preposition of the phrase, apart from, to mean except for. But a part, two words, is a noun, phrase meaning a piece or a segment of the whole. Which means if you don't come apart, you will come apart. If you don't take a break, you will break. So many of us attempt to stay in a thing and we continue to try to function in dysfunction because we have defaulted to believing that we can work our way through it. I wrote a book called Leadership and Loneliness and one of the things I wrote in that book was about you cannot normalize the, the dysfunction of doing because we continue to do and do and do because doing anesthetizes us from our drama and our trauma and our pain and we keep doing and we throw ourselves in our work because that's how we deal with things we got problems in our home or problems whatever and we just say I'm just gonna work I'm gonna work I'm gonna stay busy and you just keep doing because doing has validated you doing becomes an endorphin people see you what are you doing what are you doing and you keep feeling like if I just keep doing if I just stay busy I don't have to deal with it but it ain't going nowhere it's gonna be there when you get through doing you get through doing working 12 and 13 hours a day when you go home it's still gonna be you keep on doing and doing and doing and God told me to tell you you are not a human doing. You are a human being. And when you got to stop doing long enough to come apart so you can find out who you be. Because if you keep doing, the devil's going to have you doing something that's not who you be. 
Hannah, you're going to end up becoming just like Peninnah. You're going to end up hurting that girl if you don't step away and say, Lord, you know who I be. See, some of your enemies ought to be glad that you stepped away. Some of your enemies ought to be happy that you got a prayer life. Because if you would have done some of the things that you had were thinking about, I wish I had a witness up in here today. God is speaking to somebody right now. God is speaking to somebody right now. You better come apart. That you don't come apart. You better take some time and deal with this stuff. But because you've got to come to the point where you lay it all on the altar. The Bible says she prayed fervently. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. So you've got to lay it all on the altar. The Bible says she prays so fervently. She was praying. you got to see her. She's in the temple alone. And she's praying like this. Her mouth is moving, but no words are coming out because she is praying in her heart. It's interesting, right? When you look at the scripture, Jesus brings this up. Jesus says, now, listen, it's not what comes out of the mouth. It's what's in the heart of man. Because people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And religion, recreation of religion has made people think because you are so intelligent and you know how to pray the King James Version, we think your prayer is powerful. But you are praying to be seen of men. Your real prayer is in your heart. And when you pray right like this, watch this, you don't have an awareness of your surroundings. Because to pray like this, you've got to get in the presence. See, when you're praying with a bunch of words to, so people can hear them, you're praying for an audience response. So you are communicating to God, but when you pray with your heart, you got to commune and abide with God. And when you abide with God, you don't have an awareness who's around. See, some of you, you be wondering if people be in the presence of God. And you be wondering, do they know I'm here? They just keep standing up. They, they, don't, they don't care about you being here because they're not doing it for you. They are oblivious to your presence when they get in the presence of God. They're not worried about you looking at their hair or worried about you looking at their shoes. They are here because they are need a word and a witness from God. Wait a minute. One of the places I like to go, one of the places I like to go, I like to go, uh, I like to go to Vegas. I like the shows. So if you see me in Vegas, just, just, uh, just keep walking. Just wave at me, just keep walking. I like the shows in Vegas. But I can't turn the preacher off even where I go. God be talking, I can't turn it off. And so I'm in Vegas at the Venetian, and these revelations are hitting me while I'm walking through the Venetian. I'm walking through the Venetian shops, and I'm looking up, and I noticed something. They painted the ceiling blue with clouds. I notice there's no clocks in the casino. No clocks in the hotel. Because there's a psychology to the environment. No matter what's happening outside, in here, it's all where the sun is always shining. No matter how much money you lost today, don't worry about it. The sun is always shining. It doesn't matter what time you want to go hang out. If it's 2 in the morning, 12 midnight, 6 o'clock in the morning, don't worry. Because the sun is always shining. The Venetian taught me something that I think you need to learn about prayer and get in the presence of God because when you get in his presence, it doesn't matter what's happening on your job. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. The sun, S-O-N, is always still shining. It doesn't matter what time it is. Some of y'all, you're not spiritual enough to get this. You be so tired, that's too early in the morning. It's too late at night to be praying. But baby, when you need a breakthrough, you don't care if it's 3 in the morning. You don't care if it's 6 in the morning. You're not concerned about what time it is because you know there's power in prayer. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Listen to me. She prayed. Gave her the clothes, but while she prayed, the Bible says that Eli the priest said, God heard you. God, God heard your request. 
Woman, I thought you was drunk. Woman, I thought you was drunk because some people don't have the spiritual capacity to understand what's happening in your life. They only have the ability to associate it with something they're familiar with. The reason why you think I'm drunk because you know what drunk look like. <laughs> On the day of Pentecost, the religious leader said, these men are full of wine. You must know what full of wine looks like. She's not drunk. She said, do not. I'm not. Don't look bad upon your servant. He says, she says, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I'm pouring my heart out. And Eli, the priest says something to her. He gives her a word from God. That God's going to do it. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. I need you to hear this. You have to demonstrate a posture consistent with the promise. You got to start looking like what you just heard. The Bible says it very specifically that when she had been taunted over and over and over by Penaniah, the Bible said she was sad. But when she got a word from God, the Bible says she was no more sad. Your countenance matters. You got to look like what you just heard God tell you. You can't be walking around toe up from the floor up looking like God hasn't given you a promise. You better start looking like your thing is about to turn around. And guess what? You got to take care of you so God can do it through you. I... I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm married to one. I was a pediatrician and a neonatologist. And any, any healthcare professional will tell you this, that when a woman has been told that she's about to have a baby, one of the things that they will tell her is you need to make sure you take care of yourself now. Make sure you limit your stress be careful of the external environments. Be careful of what you eat and what you let in your spirit because they could affect what you carry. God told me to tell somebody today, be careful what you let in your spirit. Stop letting this stuff stress you out because if you only knew what you were carrying, you wouldn't be clapping back on Facebook. You wouldn't be getting petty with people. You carrying too much to let this stuff stress you out. You got enough to fight for on the inside. You ain't got to be dealing with all that stuff on the outside. Look at somebody and say, you are carrying something great. You're carrying a vision. You're carrying a dream. You're carrying something powerful. And listen to me. The reason why you came to this service, the reason why you are tuned in today is simply this. It is simply this. I know it may look like you were against all the odds. But the reason why God wanted you to hear this word today, this is for somebody, you'll know who it's for. Because God told me to tell you, get up and know it's already done. You cried long enough, you've been taunted long enough, but you prayed long enough. And before you got up off your knees, I saw you praying earlier. God told me to tell you why you were praying in here. God was moving out there. And I come to declare today that what you've been believing God for, it's all ready, done. I dare somebody to just find five people, fist bump them, tell them it's done. It's done. It's done. That dream in your life, that vision you've been carrying, that program you've been trying to get into, that building you've been trying to buy, that house you've been believing God for that pregnancy that you've been praying over. God told me to tell you today there is a miracle in this house today, and it is already. I need somebody. Don't wait till the battle is won, but shout right. Oh. 
wait a minute. Listen, here it is. Don't, don't, don't you miss this. Don't you tune out. I want you to stand real quick. I don't want you to miss this. Please stand. Don't you miss this. Don't you tune out. Listen to me. Listen to this. Here it is. Hannah got a word on her knees. Listen to me. She left the house alone. Sad. She's going to return glad because she's going back to the same environment, a different person. God may not change the environment, but he'll change you in it. We'll help somebody up in here today. And here is the blessing. Elkanah don't even know it yet. But Hannah, all Hannah need is to just go home and touch and agree. I know it ain't worked before, but this time, something gonna happen. All you need is somebody in your life you can touch and agree with. Would you look at somebody and say, I don't know how many times it's failed before, but tell them this time, God's going to make good on it. This time, God's going to give you the miracle. This time, God's going to give you the breakthrough. I think somebody ought to give him glory. And the Bible says, she said this. Pastor Christian, she said it. Lord, when you do it, I'm going to give him to you. Oh, yeah. I need you to lift your hands with my worshipers today. That dream, that thing you've been birthing. I dare you to give it to him now. I dare you to give oh. it to him. You know, the greatest gift you could ever give him is your life. The greatest gift. And listen, while hands are lifted all around the world, all around the globe, and all in this sanctuary, somebody, while hands are lifted, your life matters to him. Because God wants you. He wants your heart. And today, if you're here, this word changed your life. Today, Jesus says he loves you. Come just as you are. I want you to know, meet me at this altar. You want to recommit your life to him. You say, Pastor, I need a church home for me and my family. It doesn't matter what color you are, what the you come from it's about I want the real thing I want Jesus in my life pastor you may say I'm here pastor and I need a covering while I'm here for school guess what we want you to come by watch care I don't care if you're in that balcony on this floor while we are worshiping God and we are saying God take this and I'm giving it back to you I need you to give your life to him right now get to this altar quickly come 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 while you're watching me online I want you to text the word salvation to 78228 I want you to do it now and when you come somebody's gonna come stand with you come on come on come on that's it that's it come on come on something come on I believe if nobody else believes it if nobody else believes it if nobody else believes it church I want you to start giving God glory see I believe somebody's life got saved today I believe somebody the devil was interrogating your mind and your spirit and making you think it was going to always be the way it was. But the devil is a liar. Bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the place where God says healing is in this house today. Come on. Woo. Yes, Lord. Today, God says, I need you to try me. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Right now. Come on. Come on. I need somebody to start giving God the glory. Come on. I see you. The Bible says she was no longer sad. Come on. 
got to listen. Hannah, come on. I'm, I'm waiting. I see you. Come on. Sometimes you got to get to a point where even if you got to come alone, that means from the influence of everything that's got you wondering, well, what are they going to think if I do this? What, what you, God is breaking you out of your place of familiarity to give you the biggest breakthrough you because you got to get past what color you are. You got to get past your past. You got to get past denominational stuff. You just got to want God. You just got to say, Lord, I just want to be what you want me to be because I'm not leaving here without receiving what you have for my life. I am not tuning off until I get everything God has for my And this next 60 seconds, and I promise you I'm done. But I know in my spirit, I know it. It has never failed me yet. He has never failed me yet with this. I know today you're on the edge of your seat and you're sitting there and you're contemplating at the same time the enemy is interrogating. You're contemplating. The enemy is interrogating. And every time you say, I know I should be at that altar, the enemy says, no, just wait, just wait. You are not promised tomorrow. God sent this word because this is what's called a rhema word, right now word. This is about what God wants to do. This is a time you've been praying, believing God for it, and then God dropped it in your lap to tell you what you've been praying for is already done. Get out of your seat. Get to this altar. Get out of that seat. Get to this altar. The next 60 seconds, your destiny, your life, it's on you now. Come, come, come on, come on, come on. That's it, that's it. That's it. Come on, church. Give God glory. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. is going to bless people that hadn't even been born yet. <laughs> you are carrying generational greatness. Samuel would bless because his mama was a prayer warrior. Samuel was offered to the Lord and you have no idea what's inside of you. That's why the enemy wants to kill it. But the devil is a liar. God's got you. And you got some folk around you today that's going to touch and agree. And we're not going to let you go. We got you. I thank God today for every one of these lives at this altar today. Every one of the people that made a decision online. Here's what I want you to do, and you, you, you got you to gotta do this. You can't miss this moment. But on that screen right now is the word salvation. I want you to text that with your device, that word. If you don't have it, make sure the people around you are going to make sure you do it. They're going to make their, their people around you and their leaders of our church that are going to help assist you with this. Text the word salvation to 78228. And while you're watching me around the world, text that word right now because I can see it when it comes 78228. Make sure you do it. I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God today begins the best days of the rest of your life. And I'm giving God glory for it today. Take your time and do that. Mount Zion, would you help me thank God for every life at this altar? 
Come on. Come on. Now, thank God for all of you around the world that made that decision. I want you to stay at this altar as long as you want to, to make sure you follow through with that. Make sure you connect because we're going to connect with you. And we thank God today. Oh, boy. God has great things for you. You are so loved by God. I promise you, he has great plans for your life. So, Father, thank you for what we've experienced today, for this worship experience and for reminding us if nobody else believes, we're not going to stop believing in what's possible and what you placed in us. So cover us, keep us. And, God, we thank you for every last one of these decisions today. And we leave here today knowing what we've been on our face about. It is already done. And we leave here no more saying, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Woo!